Welcome to the WA Property Q&A, the podcast where I explore the ins and outs of buying property in Western Australia. I'm your host, Peter Fletcher, and each week I interview local property experts to help you to develop a deep understanding of the nuances of buying property in WA. From market trends to legal considerations, no topic is off limits. But before we dive in, a friendly reminder, while we provide valuable information, it's important to note that nothing discussed in this podcast should be construed as personal investment advice. Always remember to seek the appropriate professional advice for your specific circumstances. Now, let's get started and unlock the secrets to successful property buying in WA. Michael Keel, yes. welcome to the show. Thanks, mate. Um, uh, for those of you who don't know you, Michael Keel um, has been around real estate in Victoria Park, Belmont, um, and surrounds for about 100 years. No, it's not quite that long. Have a look at you. You're like you're beautiful. It's a third of a century, a third, Peter. A third of a century. Yes. So close, about 30 years. 30 plus. 30 plus. Yeah. Wow. You don't, you, you only look 28. Jeez, mate. You're too kind. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Mike, I... Um, Let's let's have a chat about um, about your story and, and and where you came from. Yep. What do you where do you want me to start? When I first met you or come across you, you were uh, I think eighteen or nineteen years of age. Yep. You were working with your dad for uh, L J Hooker Belmont. Is that right? Yep. So that was not the beginning. The beginning started with Mare and Co in South Perth. But that's um, an interesting story as well because um, I literally, because I was 18 mm. um, and it was predominantly a more uh, mature mm-hmm. industry, yep. um, I literally had to beg to get a start um, to a guy called Brian Welsh and Laurie Gibson. Yes. Um, Welshie gave me a go. Um, Gibbo mm-hmm. thought um, uh, Welshie was losing his marbles. Um, and I started out with them actually, so that was um, 34 years ago. And um, the I struggled in that area to you know get a foot. So when does that take us back to 89? Does it? Uh, so it'd be 90, 90. 1990. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So um, so I came in when you know we'd seen that property boom, mm-hmm. and then literally everybody's um, properties had sort of dropped by 40 percent very very quickly and and high interest rates were you know had killed the you know i think the recession we had to have something like that so you started in arguably the hardest market that i've ever seen yeah it was very challenging so and interestingly enough the um area that i picked in south perth it wasn't really an area i picked it was just like uh, who would give me an opportunity Mm. and that's where their office was and it's interesting, um, you know, for any of your listeners, I know that a lot of real estate people would be listening to this, sometimes um, you've got to find your right area. So after sort of struggling for 12 months in that area, I then, um, you know, it, it killed me to say um, to the Brian Welsh, sorry, mate, I've got to go um, to another area. And that's where I moved across to Belmont. Um, and that was more of a working class area and, uh, you know, uh, an easier demographic for me to get established where there was less competition. Um, and so, um, believe it or not, I then moved across um, with Laurie Kelly. So I think everybody's worked for Laurie Kelly's um, uh, <laughs> over the years. So, Good old um, Laurie, yeah. yeah unfortunately, wow. he's no longer here. But, mm. um, yeah, Laurie gave me a um, you know, start in Belmont and, um, and that was uh, greatly appreciated. And then from there, um, we um, moved over to LJ Hookers. Um, so we didn't stay with Laurie for long, probably, I don't know, maybe another six, 12 months. And then we found, you know, um, the right home, um, working with Glennis Stevenson and Jeff Stevenson, the mother and son uh, formula. And that's actually when dad came into real estate. So a lot of people think that dad got me well, he got me into real estate because he encouraged me to go into real estate, but our family business was hotels. Um, and so dad was always a publican. Um, and uh, then I started really getting some good traction um, with LJ Hooker. Um, and uh, then dad, um, through um, being in the pub industry, 
Um, he's, um, he, he had uh, some health issues and then um, basically uh, he came into real estate with me and we became the father and son team, which was probably at the point where, where we met. Mm. And you go, oh, who's this young kid? Um, you know, running, cheeky running little up start he was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I um, yeah, I remember walking into a home open, and you you know um, David Elphick. Um, yes. And um, David had this ripper uh, listing in Lathlane, and it was like only eighty five grand at the time, um, right near the railway line in Bishopsgate Street. And um, yeah, Dave uh, sort of uh, thought, well, who's this young guy? Um, really didn't give me any love um, or any time of the day um, and uh, and you know obviously he thought I wasn't going to hang around very long but we'd actually now uh, become very good friends over over time and uh, yeah he always brought that up and said gosh I remember you coming in I'm just thinking who, who's this young kid what's he doing is he lost so um so yeah um, so I had to overcome age um, uh, as a bit of a you know like a, a obstacle um, but um, I overcame it because I was always I was pretty hungry and enthusiastic and um, yeah I was uh, always prepared to you know uh, work the long hours uh, to help people find uh, property um, that they're looking for. So, so you grew up in hospitality. You you grew up around hotels. Yes, is yep. that right? In, in, here in, in WA, here in 100%. Perth. Yep, yeah, yep. Mm. Um, the family one of the family hotels was Irene's Park Tavern which was down on the strip in um, Albany Highway, which is now known as Franklin's. Is so, that um, right? Yeah, so, and Irene's um, my uh, grandmother um, on my mum's side. So, so, yeah, and I was heading in that direction. I was going to go into the pub industry and literally Dad said, mate, don't go into it. It's a mugs game. And he'd been, you know, probably spent, I think, but when he came into real estate with me, he'd been in the pub industry for 30 years and he had a, um, a heart attack um, from drinking too much and smoking too much and the stress. Um, and that's what led him to come into real estate. But he also, you know, gave me some really good advice to go down the real estate path. And believe it or not, um, uh, I, I was always fairly good with people, at, even at school. I was quite social. Um, I could mix it with every single group at school whether you're the nerds or you're the cool guys or you're the sports guys I'd uh, all the boarders actually a lot of people at I was at Wesley College they used to think that I was a boarder because I was the only day student that did farm economics yeah but right I, but I heard um, when I was playing first 18 in year 11 that um, it was uh, a very easy subject so um, <laughs> I thought uh, suits me yeah, just yeah, fine I thought, I thought yeah I'm happy with farm economics so it's, uh, when, you know, it was grow and growing veggies and you know having beehives um, during school uh, so yeah that was pretty cool um, so yeah, so Dad, um, uh, he used to have some of his best patrons were um, real estate agents at the uh, at the pub, mm. and um, uh, I won't mention names, but um, uh, a few of them would come in and. Surely you can mention a couple. Oh, okay. Well, I will. Uh, I don't know if he's still around. Um, uh, Trevor Parry. Oh yes, I remember yeah, Trevor. He yes. used to love having a beer with my um, old man. Yeah. And um, so that's um, yeah, people like that. Hillary Holland. Yes. Um, yes. Uh, they used to come into the pub. And, uh, and, you know, Dad used to love listening to their stories and they, they always seemed to have a bit of money. They always had a bit of uh, time and freedom. And, um, and Dad knew that I didn't, you know, like being stuck behind a desk. You know, um, even at school, I just I, I was always wanting to be outdoors. And he goes, mate, these guys, they've got it great. They've got money. They always seem to have time. They're never in the office. He said, um, I reckon you could do well if um, these guys are doing well. And, uh, <laughs> and that, was, that was it, mate. That's um, what got me into real estate. So it's the best advice my dad's ever given me. Yeah, right. Um, and, uh, yeah, he often says he's still alive. He's um, now approaching his mid-80s. And he goes, um, geez, I wish I just took 5% of everything you... Um, you know, <laughs> I've, 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 you know, all your commissions, you know, he said, I'd be uh, pretty happy these days. You know? Yes. Um, so, uh, yeah. What did your dad do after real estate? Um, so, uh, dad went, um, moved down south. So started his new life. So unfortunately mum and dad, 
um, had to move on because their relationship had sort of fallen down. Mm -hmm. And that was mainly due to the pub industry as well. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, Dad actually did a Tony Robbins course and came back and made these life-changing moves. Um, and one of them was to... Um, separate from mum and um, oh wow yeah and that's that, tiny uh, yeah that um, sort <laughs> of uh, uh, you know took a you know uh, devastated the family but um, it you know these things happen and life is um, often you know you got to live a life you love and um, if uh, you um, need to head in a different direction like I get it and mm -hmm. um, and later on we'll talk about that because I think you wanted to know about you know what's led me to where I am right now mm. um, so, um, so yes, I'm, I was happy for him at the time I wasn't, but um, I'm certainly happy for him now because it's his life and he should live the life he, he wants to live. So, mm. um, And uh, then he uh, bought a farm down because um, he originally, before he went into pubs, um, he was on a farm um, and, um, and obviously met my mum and um, grandfather bought the pubs and, you know, who better to manage the pub than, than family, you know, because mm. there's a lot of cash money floating around so you need somebody um, that you can trust to be in that position um, and so he returned back to the farm he bought a couple of school buses and he um, drove uh, school buses for probably another 20 years that was a lucrative little business and uh, he grazed um, and raised cattle and uh, yeah he often says to me uh, literally every day he's just so grateful um, you know, that he's, you know, doing what he's doing and he can still do what he does. Mm. Uh, so, um, so yeah, so it's, um, yeah, it's, it's a nice story. So you went from hookers and uh, there might have been a, one or two moves before that, um, but you started Porter Matthews Belmont. Correct, yes. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so there was a move before that. Yeah. So, um, uh, so we helped uh, Glenis uh, get to... Um, uh, she actually was one of the only franchises in Australia to um, set up um, a second office. That's how much uh, we were growing as, a, as an office. Um, and obviously my dad and myself were, were the top agents there. Um, and she opened up a second office in Belvedere Street in... Mm -hmm. um, in Cloverdale, in, uh, yeah, Cloverdale. So she had yeah. one, yeah. Mm. No, it was um, it was actually Belmont, yeah. Mm. So okay. Belmont, mm. and then um, but on the border of Redcliffe, and mm. then she had the shop at the Belmont Forum. So we, you know, that was a really uh, lovely period. It was great to see Glenis, you know, um, had that, all that success, and it was like the most consistent LJ Hooker office in Australia, and mm. blah blah blah. And then I actually um, uh, went out and set up Estates Realties, and a lot of people. Don't, don't know this or would have forgotten. So that was also down on Epson Avenue. I, Estates uh, Realty. Estates Realty. Wow. And the yeah. guy who, um, uh, so I never had a real estate license, but I knew that I wanted a real estate office. Yes. So I went and paid a licensee to use his license so I could run my own who real estate that? business. Mel Harvey, and he was a very um, entrepreneurial man. He's no longer around, mm -hmm. um, but um, built some um, pretty iconic um, buildings uh, back in the day um, in high rises. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, so he was an accountant, so he couldn't say no to, um, you know, uh, giving me his license. <laughs> and um, uh, interestingly enough, I, that business I probably had for only nine months and sort of really struggled because um, uh, when you put on the, the, the business hat, and you go from real estate agent, and you've got to remember I'm a fairly new real estate agent, so I've probably set up my own business in less than three years. You're still, you still would have only been 20-something, early yeah, 20s? 21, maybe, mm. yeah. Um, so, so I was pretty driven um, mm. to do that. Not many kids would do that, and um, uh, or young adults, whatever. And, mm. um, and then um, that wasn't working, so like it, it was just too much for me to... The, you know, to do all the accounts and marketing mm. and get out there and sell, sell. and then I put on a, a receptionist and did property management. So I was doing, doing it all, mate, um, at 21, believe it or not. And um, uh, then I thought, no, nah, I've got to sort of um, work out a better way. And because um, I was with LJ Hookers, I had um, a good relationship with all the corporate guys with... Um, um, uh, you know, like uh, Terry uh, Terry Matthews and um, Bruce Porter. Mm -hmm. So that's where the Porter Matthews came along. 
And then there was another guy, which you'll remember, um, Mark Jones, Jonesy. Mm, mm. So Jonesy was... Um, Mark H. Jones. That's it. Mark H. Jones, yeah. <laughs> come, come into real estate. Also a couple of years older than me. Um, had his uh, marketing degree, um, did a fantastic newsletter and sort of burst onto the scenes. Mm. And, um, and him and I... He was very talented. Uh, yeah, mm. and he's doing really well these days over in Melbourne as well. So um, As a real estate agent? As uh, running real estate champions, yeah, over oh, really? in Melbourne. Yeah, yeah so right. when um, myself and Mark uh, closed down the business, he mm. kept the, um, the business name. And uh, and continues on in um, in Frankston in Melbourne. Mm-hmm. Uh, so he's uh, and he's so, doing. So so you go from estate to yeah, cha- to, uh, so to estates Realty morphed into Porter Matthews. Yeah. Wait for it, Keelan Jones. Oh no! So actually, sorry, no. It went Porter Matthews Residential. That's what it was because we were the residential division. Yes. Of the. Um, uh, commercial business, Porter Matthews, yeah. which were the what happened. The boys at LJ Hookers Corporate, um, they shut down the commercial, and then they went and set up uh, Porter Matthews. Mm. Um, so, and I had the relationship there. I said to Jonesy, mate, you know, you, you know, your talents way better, you know, running a business because he uh, was that way inclined. He had that um, mindset. And even when, when our future businesses um, developed, he was always the sort of admin guy. You know, he had some great marketing ideas, but he was more, you know, c- trying to keep the admin all together. Mm. And I was mm. more the sales and sales growth and sales mm. manager, that type of role. So um, <clears throat> so we all um, ended up with a 25% share. Um, so States Realty just morphed into um, Porter Matthews. Um, residential, and then probably um, we operated in Kenning Highway um, uh, for uh, maybe a year and a half, and um, then we um, bought out uh, Bruce and Terry's share. To um, so then myself, myself and Mark had fifty fifty share. We kept the Porter Matthews name because that was working um, that relationship, but we were ready to sort of um, you know. Uh, go it alone, mm. and um, and then we became Porter Matthews Keelan Jones Realty. Mm-hmm. So that was a bit of a tongue twister for our um, receptionist. Um, <laughs> so and we bought an office um, opposite the Belmont Forum, and um, it was the worst house in the street. Um, and uh, yeah, we had to um, uh, renovate it. Um, I think we had it fumigated about thirty times because it um, it was really bad with um, cockroaches and. Um, so, uh, yeah, so that's how we got to Porter Matthews. What happened there? With Porter Matthews? Yeah. Um, that was pretty amazing as well. It's, um, you know, uh, we grew very quickly. Um, we ended up buying the building next door. He's um, one of my reps. Oh, who was that? Was that Astrid? Astrid. <laughs> oh, yes, yeah. Well, Astrid became a director in Porter Matthews. Um, we set up a Vic Park division even though we were operating out of Belmont. So that was her baby. Um, but she was a very talented lady. She was. Uh, Astrid, mm. yeah. Um, mm. Great uh, prospector. Mm. Um, very good. Very good with um, mm. databasing. So mm. she, was, she, was a, she was a gun. Um, mm. And probably one of the best female saleswomen I've actually, you know, come across. Uh, you know, um, she'd be up there with like Dahlia Rakiki, mm. um, who was... Um, very talented the best you know mm, so mm. um but um oh i just remembered at one stage there sorry i did actually go out and um uh so it must have been um before yeah so it was lj hooker belmont i left there and i went out to lj hooker thornley did right? you yeah okay um, before Just I set briefly. up estates groups, yeah, mm-hmm. I'll tell you this story, and this is a this is a ripper, which was reminded uh, to me the other day uh, by Sam Safiotti. Do you know Sam? Sam Safiotti, yes, yeah, yes, up in uh, Rolly Stone Real Estate Rolly in Stone. the hills. Mm-hmm. Um, yes. Anyway, um, so I was really climbing the ranks with LJ Hookers, and I wanted to be the best, basically. So who who do you go and um, hang uh, out with the best? Yeah, hang out with other top performing operators. So mm. I was smart enough to learn that. So straight away, Daly Rakiki, best agent in WA at the time. I'm coming over to work with you, Dahlia, because I want to learn from you. I want to become 
you know, the best. And I think I even told her I wanted to beat her and um, she said, oh, okay, um, no worries. <laughs> so so I briefly went there. There was Neville Vallecott who was um, there. His son, Rob, um, works mm-hmm. alongside me now. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, Nev was really, you know, uh, you know, a real gun as well. And he'd actually... They've had some really good operators in there. The Frasinas. Uh, no, the Frasinas are from Gosnells, aren't they? Yeah, I'm not... Um, yeah, mm. I'm not... Too, I, I've yeah, heard no, that they, they were, were Kelms. I think they yeah. might have had their own one. But yeah, Lou. Mm. Um, but yeah, they have had some really good operators and, mm. and just consistent um, mm. and been a top office for a very long time. So um, anyway, um, I said to Dahlia, but... I want to. I want to be in that corner of the the office, and I. They had a desk, and it was pretty basic. And I said, and I want to bring in my own desk. Um, so they said, yep, you can have that. We'll just move everyone around, and um, and then uh, then the desk came, and the desk was um, uh, one of these beautiful Jarrah, oh uh, like God. a like a lawyer's desk, right? Oh, oh. So and everyone's everyone else has got like little school desk, you know, like um, <laughs> and. Um, Anyway, that, oh, that like caused a 1990s version of yeah, episode uh, of Suits. Oh, <laughs> oh man, did that stir up a hornet's nest? You oh know, my like, god, um, you didn't have one of those big leather chairs, did you? With the... I did have a beautiful chair as well, and <laughs> um, and I was right in the corner where you know you could see everything. And and uh, anyway, I'd forgotten about all of that, but I was at a luncheon recently and I caught up with my good friend, Sam Safiotti, and he was explaining to a mate how we had met um, and, uh, you know, we're working in the same office. And then he told that story. I go, oh, my God, I'd forgotten all about that, Sam. And he goes, and Sam goes, who is this guy? Who, who does he think he is? You know, like coming into our office, bringing his own desk, his own chair, getting his own position. so, And that's how our relationship happened. Um, but um, I only stayed there for probably about, I don't know, six to seven or eight months. Um, and um, I had to move back to Belmont because even though I was working out of Thornley, all my listings were back in Belmont. Mm. So it was a bit like, um, a bit silly, you know. Um, and, um, you know, obviously I... You, know, you could do it now with mobile phones and the internet, yep. but back in those days, it, it location of the office was a, a really important a- thing. Absolutely, and they and, and Thornley had the you know the best window display um, as mm. you come into Thornley. Yeah, and that that was your internet. That was your website back then. Absolutely. Yep. So um and um yeah and you know obviously with being with Dahlia you know she was a fantastic um worker you know and she's a great networker as well and it's very communicate um community orientated mm. so I could see you know I, I got what I needed to you know sort of um move on from there um but um the she was working so hard that I hardly saw it anyway. Yes. So, um, but, you mm. know, um, success... As is often the case with yeah. top... What do they say? Members. Success leaves clues and daily rakiki, you know, work ethic, say no more. Mm-hmm. You know, she's, um, mm-hmm. If there was a deal to be had, she wouldn't make an excuse. She'd just go and do it. Mm-hmm. So, um, and, um, yeah. So, um, the... Uh, so, yeah, back to Porter Matthews. So, we grew, um, we bought... Um, a second office next door, um, you know, we renovated that. So these were houses on like 700 square metre blocks, probably grew to 20, 25 people maybe at, at, at its peak and uh, managed about 400 properties. Um, we grew really rapidly. Um, and then, um, uh, oh yeah, we set up the Vic Park division. And uh, then I was probably, I think maybe... So that happened between 23 to 27. Um, and then um, uh, Jonesy and I said, let's sell and go 23 travel. 23 or, or? No, no, I was about 27. Oh, yeah. I did, right, yep. Yeah, yeah. So, um, and, um, and I just worked, um, you know, so hard to, you know, get to that point. And I was actually probably a bit burnt out, to be honest. And Jonesy was in the same same sort of uh, space. Mm-hmm. So um, and it was sort of like, oh, well, mate, um, let's just sell up and, um, and uh, go travelling the world and um, have a good time. Because we both, you know, there was girls around, but we were, you know, um, sort of, we, w- we wanted to go see the world. And, and pretty much we, um, 
uh, sold the business. We sold it to two people. So uh, Jake Kneebone um, bought the uh, property management business. Mm-hmm. Um, and we wanted all of our clients because our clients were like, you know, a lot of them are friends in, the, in you know, and you develop relationships. So we wanted them to go to a specialist property management company because we thought that that would be the best outcome for our clients. Um, and um, and then we sold the Porter Matthews um, database. I think we were like the very, very first um, real estate company possibly in Australia to get paid for a database, but our really? database was that good. Wow. Yeah, it was a great system. Wow. And um, that was bought by Ray Grogan and Robin Lees, who had Park First National. Mm-hmm. And our brand that we'd created in such a short period of time, call it three, four years, they even, they, um, and this was a feather in our ha- um, cap, you know, we thought that they were with um, the First National Group, a yes. very large first, um, you know, franchise group. Mm. And they dropped the First National and kept the Porter Matthews name. Mm-hmm. So we were really proud of that. Um, that Still um, Porter Matthews today. Correct, mm. yeah. Um, that we'd built something and, um, yeah, it's lived on. And, um, yeah, so that was a, that was a you know, a, a good feeling, you know, mm-hmm. that... Um, we could uh, create something. So databases are worth something? Oh, yes. Um, databases, like if I was to sell my database, well, I wouldn't sell my database today. Mm-hmm. I would just have somebody continue to um, manage it for me mm-hmm. and then um, generate um, a profit share from the database with other agents. So that, that is my ex- actual exit strategy mm-hmm. um, when I'm ready to pull, pull up stumps. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So, um, yeah. So you just charge a clip of the ticket for everyone yeah, that's on the database? Me, yeah, give me 20%, 30% and um, I'll give you um, a beautiful client, um, you know, and, um, and, and even, uh, I, you know, if I'm around, I'd be happy to go and sit in on that, um, you know, um, introduction. Like mm-hmm. there's, um, there's buyer agents out there um, at the moment, but a lot of those buyer agents um, are also... Um, uh, acting as vendor agents mm-hmm. so um so basically they um help people find the best agent and mm-hmm. take a clip of the commission mm-hmm. so um so i think you'll see more of that as well mm-hmm. in the in the future and mm. um but yeah that's still a long way off i'm like i'm loving real estate so much that um yeah it's not even um uh you know um close to um, happening, you know, if I've got another good 10 years, mm. um, uh, health permitting, um, uh, and uh, yeah, my love for the game is is, is never been stronger, mm-hmm. never been stronger, mm. but I'll touch on that because mm. where I am now is, is you know, I'm in a different space and, and life evolves as well, so you know, one thing um, when you're running a business, you know, when you're starting, you want to become a good salesperson, then you want to be the best. Then you want to run your own business. Then you, you know, go, oh, I'm burnt out. I need to have a holiday. Mm. Or you're in a partnership and you, you know, you started out both on the same, um, you know, wavelength. And then, you know, you suddenly, you know, got different things going on in your life and you take different directions. Mm, so, mm, mm. so nothing's forever, Pete. Yeah, you know, yeah, um, yep. And you sort of always evolve. But getting back to the Porter Matthews days, um, so when we sold the business, um, uh, we did a very nice uh, handover um, uh, with both the property management and the and the sales business, and um, and then we went travelling around South America, South Africa, you know. Um, uh, this North is you America. and Mark, yeah, mm. and, and another mate. Um, mm. So um, so and then I. Um, uh, it was meant to be like a long trip, like, you know, 12 to 24 months. Mm-hmm. And, um, but after three and a half months, I'd actually had enough of living out of a suitcase. Um, some unbelievable times, like, um, you know, that, that it just etched in my memory of stuff that we've done, bungee jumping off the Victoria Fall, going in the carnival at um, Mardi Gras time, you know, um, playing soccer on Copacabana Beach, um, you know, climbing mountains, um, you know, y- you name it, um, we did it. You know, watching the cricket in South Africa, wow. a test mm-hmm. match with Australia versus South Africa, and we're basically the only Australians there, you mm-hmm. know, in the banter. 
It was just <laughs> amazing, you know. Um, you know, going to Chile and going to a game with a hundred thousand spectators. Um, you know, like a derby clash in in uh, Brazil. Um, like it was just amazing. Um, safaris, you name it. And I'm so glad that I did that because it's um, interesting. When I sold the business, I was that tired and burnt out um, because I'd worked so hard to that point that I actually said um, part of selling the business and going overseas was then to explore other opportunities Um, uh, and it wasn't to um, uh, real estate related you know so uh, selling the business and then I said in into my my mind that's it I'm never coming back to real estate I've done it had had enough and it's uh, it's yeah, time for me to move on. And um, so we went, uh, part of the trip around the world was to look at opportunities. And, um, you know, we um, we saw um, like Red Bull was, um, uh, you know, in South Africa, but it wasn't in Australia. So mm. um, uh, so that was, we were looking for stuff and, um, and that opportunity um, was there to bring Red Bull to Australia. Um, uh, but um, we focused on um, uh, when we were uh, whitewater rafting down the Zambezi and then um, jumping off the Victoria Falls. And you can imagine the solo men ad, you know, where yeah. that guy's uh, drinking solo. Yeah, yeah. And then afterwards, um, you know, we're sitting back and reflecting and we're drinking Zambezi beer and we're going, I oh, wish we'd bring Zambezi beer back to Australia like um, Corona. But, you know, again, that never, ever eventuated. So, um and then um, I think um, after three and a half months, um, I was ready to come back home and uh, Jonesy was still continuing on through North America and then he was going across to, to Europe um, and he stayed there for a couple of years um, uh, and he was doing uh, personal training, that was his thing, um, you know, and he just wanted to free his mind of real estate. And then I came back and um, basically I went up to Kalgoorlie Mm-hmm. Um, to do real estate in, in Cal, which I think, is that where you're from? Mm. Yeah. yeah. Did yeah. you ever do real estate there? Yeah, that's where I started. Is that right? Yeah, with David James. Oh, David James oh, and Graham Brown. Brown, right. Brown James and Associates, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, um, I warmed your desk. Mate, you obviously <laughs> did. So, so. I, I convinced them that young people were worth a start. Yeah. <laughs> but you were a bit more mature once you hit Kalgoorlie, yeah. Yeah. So, um, mate, how, how long did you last in Kalgoorlie? Uh, well, four years. Four years yes. in real estate there. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah so I got my license in uh, the back end of 88, okay. uh, early early 89. Yeah. And I had a conversation with Rita about, well, I've got, got my license. Where do I want to start up an agency? I, yeah. uh, and I don't want to start up an agency in Kalgoorlie because I, I, you know, I was a bit over the, the tin fences and the red dirt. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, I said, what about Esperance? And she said, no chance, Peter. No chance. So Perth, it is. <laughs> so we come down to Perth, and that's that's. Where I started. Well, I bought into an agency. Yeah, in, it was in, uh, in professionals, Park. wasn't it? Yeah, the, um, yeah. Keogh and Keogh Thurgood. And Thurgood. Yeah, 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 I remember yeah. those days. So um, they, you guys were massive. Ah, uh, well, yes. That that's what it looked like on the outside. The yeah. Keogh and Thurgood organisation had a you know six or eight offices, and uh, yeah, but it was. It was a bit of a house of cards, to be honest. Yeah, it was functional, um, like most of the agents. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was, you know, like, uh, yeah. I, I, I've got some, you know, horrendous stories of those days and uh, that that period between uh, ninety, um, about ninety one through to ninety three, where I had that big trust account accident. Um, that was just some of the worst days of my life. Yeah, like it okay. was just shocking. So yeah. Okay, yeah. well, we won't talk any more about uh, Keogh and Thurgood <laughs> then, mate. Uh, but, um, oh, look, I learned a lot about myself, I guess, at the time. But, uh, yeah, it was it was tough, but, yeah. Sometimes so. they say, mate, the best gifts come badly wrapped. So um, Yes, yeah, that's true, mate. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've certainly had plenty of those along yeah. the way. So um, it hasn't always been, uh, you know... Um, Kalgoorlie was good though, Mike. Um, I remember I I sold seven houses in the last ten days in Kalgoorlie. Wow! Like that—that's a pretty fair effort. That's that's awesome. That's um, elite, mate. (laughs) I just just might might have might have been going. Well, let's get rid of all these. I don't know what it was, but it was just like it just happened. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. And uh, why I never thought 
geez, it's probably not a good idea to move. Yes. Just stay here, keep, yes. keep rolling. Yeah, uh, well, a lot of money's been made out of Kalgoorlie, mate. Uh, oh, yeah. Whether it's yeah. mining and, and or real estate. So, um, yes. But, yeah, so, um, so I basically um, then went up to Cal because mm. um, Dave James, who you worked with, um, no, they had Brown James, and they were killing it. Um, they were killing it um, prior to uh, me selling the business. So they were doing, like, mm -hmm. you know, huge commissions, mm -hmm. you know, for where they were in the day. Mm -hmm. And they were winning all the Osnet Awards, which I was a, a founding member of, which was a group of independent agents in mm -hmm. Perth. Mm -hmm. And um, and I thought, right. and Osnet has gone on to become the agency. The agency, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so you kind of started the agency. Full circle, mate. You're kind of the founder pretty of the much, agency. Pretty much. Yeah, I, I think won't I, take all that credit. No, I though. think you should. Yeah, Just, yeah. Murray Joseph, um, if you're listening, mate, we, we know you, you. We know you were the. the <laughs> no, the Murray didn't the start it. He, no, he Michael Keel like, started it. <laughs> Murray, Murray was the energy. We, I just came along for the ride. So, um, in fact, uh, we're. Brown James w w was in Osnet, weren't they? Yeah, they were. Yeah. And that's how so I... So I was in... I'm kind of the founder of, of you were in the Osnet agency too. because I was in Osnet yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, we, I think we I think we all were. So Murray Murray Joseph, he's a good salesman, mate. So, um, but um, so yeah, that's how I sort of knew Dave. And then when we'd have the quarterly quarterly awards, mm. you know, the numbers they would share, and I'm going, oh wow, this is. Um, and I'd my own agency, and thinking, yeah, I'd like um, I'd like a bit of that. So, mm. Um, mm. but interestingly, um, in the time that I sold the business went away, came back. Um, I think I arrived, and as I arrived in Kalgoorlie, three Campbellda nickel mines had closed down yeah. literally that week. Yeah, yeah. So um, I sort of, um, it went from boom to bust in like less than 12 months. Campbellda so. has always lived on the edge. Yes. Yeah. Same with Cal Coolgardie. Absolutely. Like they, they, he, Kalgoorlie just hangs in there. Yes. Um but uh, Campbellder and Kilgardie, they are just donkeys on the edge. Yeah. yeah. So, so, so then, so I had the thoughts. Well, I'll go up there, and if this business is as good as it is, I would then, you know, approach David and buy into the business, mm -hmm. and um, you know, um, and and happily settle there. So, and I I went up there and. Um, I actually did quite well, um, you know, in a very short period of time, not knowing anyone. Mm -hmm. But a um, couple of things that um, I did, and um, this didn't go down too well with all the competitors, <laughs> is I went up there and within a week I was on radio um, <laughs> doing the live broadcast to my home open. And the guy would go, now we're going a live cross to <laughs> Michael, the Kalgoorlie kid. Oh, my oh. God. And mate, <laughs> so everyone knew me in less than a week in town. It was that, it was that, it was that. Um, uh, and they're going, who's this guy? Chris Feist calling, oh, no, yeah, calling himself on you. <laughs> the Kalgoorlie kid, and he's just flown into town. So, um, so, so I, I ran with it, and I remember going into some appraisals and a, an old timer going, oh, so why are you the Kalgoorlie kid? And I goes, well. Because I'm the Kalgoorlie kid. <laughs> <laughs> so he goes, okay, fair enough. Uh, so, but interestingly, I, um, you know, I really got into the community. So, and I, you know, loved my football. Yeah. And uh, so. And Kalgoorlie is that sort of town. If you yeah. play football, cricket, darts, it's a pretty good recipe for, or bowls, a yeah. pretty good recipe for listing a lot of property. Correct. So, um, so Dave James said, mate, you got to play for the Kangas. Um, and I'd been on, just come back from the world trip. I was actually pretty, pretty fit because we we were training a lot um, while we were away. Um, and um, and then I started playing with Kangas, and um, they won the premiership that year. But I obviously didn't hang around. Um, uh, but I was leading uh, footballer of the year with about four best on grounds for the competition yeah, right. um, in five games and. Subiaco were looking at me and all this sort of stuff, but I wasn't there to play footy. Yeah. I was there to sell houses, you know, um, and footy was just a part of getting into the community. Mm. Um, so, so yeah, I'd, I'd sort of come in and go on the Kalgoorlie kid, leading the footballer of the year, um, and um, and then um, four, late, four months later, um, uh, I've had my mates, because I'd sold Porter Matthews, 
And um, I had uh, a lot of my mates uh, like Dave Quadros, um, Chris Raffel, who's no longer around, um, unfortunately. And, um, Is that right? Hmm. Yeah, and a few other people um, in the company. And they're doing these figures, you know, like writing 60, 70 grand for the month in commissions. Mm. And I'm up there in Cal sort of struggling to mm. do 20, 30. And I'm going, okay, um, so, yeah. the career's over, boys. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm heading back to Perth. And um, so, um, yeah, I didn't mind the town. I just, you know, because I, I got involved and, um, and I reckon I could have stayed there. But it's hard to stay somewhere when, you know, you know that there's agents back in Perth that, um, you know, are... Uh, you know, fairly talented, um, that you, you could definitely be taking a slice of, of, of that action, you know. Yes. So so that's what I did and um, I had a restriction of trade on me so I came back and worked with Porter Matthews because um, when I sold the business, you're sort of restricted to do things for mm. a couple of years and then um, uh, stayed there um, and did really well um, and they were great. Um, and then when the restriction of trade was up, there was um, another move, which was to Realty Executives, um, which was Keith Howes, and he'd come up with, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. this sort of, um, you know, 90... Which is kind of the agency model, 90s it version. It was, or, yeah. He was, the, he was the pioneer in Australia mm. of that, you know, um, sort of desk fee. Mm. So pretty sure it, there was a desk fee with Keith. I can't, yes, can't it was. Remember. I'm pretty sure there was. And then 1200 if, bucks a month or something. Yeah, if you yeah. paid the desk fee and mm. you were a, a performer, Mm. then you would be getting, you know, the majority of the commission. So mm -hmm. I thought this is this is uh, where I need to be. Mm. And um, and it's interesting because at that point in time I'd had Estates Realty, I'd had run Porter Matthews Realty and um, and I was now like just a salesperson again, you know, with no management responsibility, even when I, you know, went salesperson with David or with back to Porter Matthews and mm. then Realty XX. And it's like, God, it felt good. You know, like um, I didn't have, um, you know, <laughs> all the all the admin um, or uh, staff issues and things to deal with. Mm. Um, and um, that was a very lucrative period. So, um, and then um, I actually uh, joined uh, Realty Executives in Vic Park with my mate, um, Dean Nicolo, so yes, and yes. still Dino's, and yeah. I've still very good mates. Um, Dino's still in that office. He is, and he is, and um, he's a consistent performer, mm. and a hell of a hell of a great guy, mm. and mm. Um, and we always have some great fun when we catch up, mm. Um, mm. and so um, uh, and so I helped him uh, build his realty execs business because um, obviously a lot of people then followed me from Porter Matthews, like your Carl Stoppics, um, they came across. He was the Rewa number one office uh, mm -hmm. agent, I think, maybe at the time, mm. um, or, or developing into that. Mm. Um, uh, and, um, yeah, there was, um, you know, um, yeah, there was a lot of people that came across. So, um, and... So, um, so, Mike, what I want to just... Because your next move is is uh, Champions. Yes. And I, and I just want to jump over that yep. to... Uh, and and I think that's a whole story in, in itself, oh, like because yeah, the, the champions the cha journey, yeah, champions absolutely. journey. I, I think that's that'd be worth us doing a, a whole whole session on, on on the champion on champions. But for the purposes of today, what yeah. I want to talk about is so you, you've you've done the champions thing and maybe had some time off, and then then you've got into started your own business called. MichaelKeel.com? No, no, no. Uh, so, or with the agency? No. So, um, so after Real Estate Champions, because um, we shut the doors on uh, October 31st or whatever it is, and then on the 1st of November, so literally one day later, mm -hmm. I joined back with Ray Grogan mm -hmm. and Michael Cullen mm -hmm. um, at Porter Matthews Vic Park as a salesperson. Mm hmm um, and then I worked with them probably um, for three or three three years maybe when we absolutely smashed it with them and mm. helped them you know really gain some profile for their office mm -hmm. and um, and uh, you know built an uh, effective business unit had three or four PAs working with me and um, yeah that I think. Um, I was still with them because the year that um, I had uh, my best year in real estate, we'd sold 185 properties for the year. 
For your so, yep, and so um, we literally, that meant I had to list 185 properties. So mm. every day for that year, I was selling or listing a property. Um, and um, and we did about two, two and a half million in gross commission for mm. the year. So, and then it was after that, 2014, um, uh, I... Um, I had a young child, a uh, couple young kids, and um, then I went um, to uh, set up my own business, which was uh, michaelkeel.com. Mm. So, and then, um, and basically that was, um, uh, all, all my team just came across. We set up in Tom Essie's um, office building in a serviced office, and we just ran out of there for um, for a while until I'd, I'd bought a real estate office over in Rivervale, which I still own, um, and that's where I, I, my office is now. Um, but that was under construction because I bought it off the plan. Um, so, yeah, so there was a time there where I was just the sales rep again with under with Bruce and um, – not sorry, with um, – Ray and um, and Michael Cullen. So, talking about your um, MichaelKeel.com when you were in Rivervale. Yes. You you had a you had a team. You had sales reps. You had. Uh, yep. Um, I don't think you had property management. Did no, you? No, we did property. You management. did property yep. management. Yeah. So you ha you had it all traditional kind of real estate agency. Yes. You were doing well. Yes. But it kind of wasn't all that it seemed. Is, yeah, is um, oh, it was just a, a decision that you, um, or actually not even a decision, it was just a, a choice um, where, um, so we were doing exceptionally well, the branding, everything was, you know, um, ticking along. Um, probably, um, like in my mind, I thought, you know, I've had the medium-sized business, I've had the very large business like Champions, mm. um, uh, and then I thought, Oh, I can do a little. I can do a small business. Small mm. business will be easy, mm. Right? Mm. but the, you know what I've learned. It's, it's probably like doing a development, right? If you're going to build two homes, you know, on a duplex block, you might as well build four homes on a quad site because mm -hmm. it's all the same. Mm. Um, you know, the same process. You've got to go through the planning approval. So the thought that I had of having a small business and keeping it simple and um, you know, at that time, I was trying to simplify my life, you know, because um, young family um, and uh, it, it wasn't. You know, you still got your payroll, you still got your property management issues, mm. you still got uh, trust accounting, you still got, um, you know, uh, marketing, HR, branding, everything. Mm. So, um, and Joe, my wife, um, she worked in the business and um, we were driving along one day and she just broke down. Um, you know, and it led to um, like a sort of heated moment um, where I just said, look, if it's, if this business is too hard, you know, um, I, I don't need it, you know, I, I'm happy to let it go, you know, we'll, you know, I'll just go back and be a salesperson. This is, this is some of the, th this, this is a moment mm. that a lot of people don't see yeah. about business owners, yeah. the, the moments they go through, mm. you know, the, the, the people look at them and, you know, they, they, they see the, the nice car or they might see the, the apparent trappings of success, but what they don't see is the wife breaking down in the car mm. and the tears and the argument and the, the oh, my God, is this what it's, how it's all going to end moment? Yeah. And then you yeah. go... They, they, don't, they often don't see that. No. And, yeah. So so we went through that moment. Um, mm. And, um, look, I was also, you know, running a business again. Um, there's so many different hats to wear. And ultimately, you know, I've been a salesperson, you know, all my life. And then you, you morph into a business owner, right? Mm. So... Um, but my real enjoyment is being a salesperson, you mm. know, and having that freedom um, of a salesperson, you know, mm. um, and just sort of being able to float in, float out, do your deals, happy clients, next. Um, and so even though she had that moment, I was also, you know, like going, yeah, this is my moment too. Mm -hmm. you know, um, so it wasn't just about mm -hmm. Joe, it's mm -hmm. like, you know, I was on the edge as well where I go, you know mm. what, um, let's go sit down with the accountant 
and that's exactly what we did. We made an immediate appointment, went to um, uh, Frank, my accountant, and said, right, Frank, here's the financials, you know. And we were turning over like 1.5 million um, mm. in commissions with, you know, and, you know, um, property management, which was only small because mm. we were just building it. Mm. Um, and, um, and about eight staff, mm. you know. And what that basically equates to, your bottom line, is 24 cents in the dollar. So, you know, every million dollars you're writing, you're keeping as a business owner mm. uh, $240,000 mm. because mm. of all the overheads. Mm. So um, basically, you know, um, for a $1.5 million turnover, it wasn't... And, and for some people, that sounds like, wow, you know, why would you complain about $240,000? Yeah. But when you're... When there's two of you yeah. working between you somewhere in the order of 100 to 120 hours a week, yeah. um, it suddenly starts becoming, why are we doing this? Yeah, and, and also, um, not, not only that, but we were, um, you know, I was still probably 60% of the turnover. So I did yeah. have a lot of people in the, you know, yep. supporting me, but yep. they weren't necessarily being profitable. So... Mm, mm. Um, so yeah, so when I sat down and go, right, all this effort, you know, running the business, a small business is just like running a big business. I don't care what anyone says. Mm. You have still all the same, um, you know, things with staff. And I would argue that small businesses are actually harder to run than big, big businesses. Um, because like when, if you've got a team of 10 and one person, resigns you've just lost 20 percent of your workforce yeah whereas if you've got 101 person resigns well it's you know it's not such a big deal yeah it's still yeah look anybody running a successful business i take my hat off to them mm, you know because mm. it's um it's 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 a lot of hard work you know and these days you know uh, we were looking at um you know uh, your staff always want more you know they want want a higher commission they want um, the, the, you know, operating cost. Uh, you know, you've seen what's happened with builders. Their operating mm. costs are going up. Um, and, um, and then you're, you're in a competitive industry where people are slicing fees. You know, so you're, you're getting smashed from three, three areas, you know, trying to always, you know, um, make your business as profitable as possible. Um, and um, so we just, we just saw the future was for us to go back and, you know, be a salesperson on my own. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I sort of, you know, each year sell, I don't know, it's bad year 60, good year 100, you know, so probably a million dollars in fees myself. And the company I'm with, um, they have a structure that's 80 to 85%. Yep, so, so sorry to interrupt there, Mike. So you've gone through that moment, you've gone to your accountant and yep. you decide, okay, we're going to yep. off... Get rid of the business. Yes, and the most logical choice, therefore, was to approach the agency. Is that right, or did um, you? Well, there was other there were other choices as mm -hmm. well. So, um, the other choice was to go back to Porter Matthews mm -hmm. with Ray um, Grogan and Michael Cullen because mm -hmm. um, they had a very compelling um, offering as mm -hmm. well, mm -hmm. um, which was, uh, you know, equally as good as uh, the agency. Mm -hmm. um, so it was a high commission split. And, um, uh, but we ended up going with the agency because the brand was, you know, uh, a fresh brand. It um, was growing. It was, it was more not localised. Uh, it had a vision to grow around Australia. And I feel that I made the right decision, mm -hmm. even though if um, I did go back to Porter Matthews because it was a hard decision because I, I got a good relationship with Ray Grogan and I respect him, um, that um, it would have worked as as well because we just um we were young kids as well and like i don't want to be known like i've made this clear with a lot of people as the best agent in perth or you know a great agent you know i want to be known as michael keel the best dad um husband you know mm -hmm. going around mm -hmm. that gets me in inspired you know mm -hmm. so if um sacrificing a real estate business you know, gives me more time with my family, I'll take that any day of the week, right? Um, yes, there was a monetary decision um, made, but that wasn't just the only decision. 
Um, you know, um, so we looked at it from a profitability point of view, but it was, you know, my wife's um, doing a lot of the back back end work, which um, again, people don't see that. Um, and um, she's a mum of mm. three young kids. Mm, mm. So, um, so the move has been unbelievable because I'm back doing what I love and I've got just this amazing energy now doing uh, what I want and I've got no aspirations. You could offer me, you go, Mike, here's a million bucks tomorrow to set up a real estate office with me. Say, Pete, keep me a million bucks. I'm not interested. Mm -hmm. So uh, I just, because I'm living a life that I absolutely love where I can balance my family and I can still work hard and I've got no stress of property management issues, people calling me, you know, alarms going off at night, receptionist calls in sick, you know, you name it, I've been there. <laughs> Even organising Christmas parties, you know, because yeah, um, yeah. you, know, you want to look after your staff. But, mm. you know, there's a lot of effort. So where do we go? You know, what are we going to eat? You know, what time does it kick off? Oh, people can't make that time. So you're just, it, it's just a it's lot of energy, mm. you know. Um, and the energy I want to put in is to, you know, my sellers and then my family, you know. So, so part of this whole journey of, you know, moves that I've made and uh, along the way I've sort of evolved and I've developed and I've you know I, I know what I want mm -hmm. out of out of life um mm -hmm. and um and and I've I've got it like I'm I'm I've got the perfect balance you know mm -hmm. like um and that's why my energy and why why would I want to get out of real estate when it's a great business um I love dealing with people um, and then I can, you know, when I go home to my family, mm. I'm, I'm home with my family and, you know, I don't have to worry about the, the business. And that's, a, and, but not to paint too much of a, like a, a rosy picture of it. Mm. You, you're still a, a very, very hard worker. Mm. Um, I sat down with you a couple of months ago. Uh, I, we were at, I was telling David James this story um, and uh, I you were at Laker doing some work on a, you know, one morning and I walked up to you and I said, do you want company? And you said to me, no, 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 I'm too busy, Peter. I'm, oh, I've got all these calls. And no, but sit down, sit down. And, yeah. and you were, you were, you work. were working, you were on, on your computer, you were sending texts, you were making phone calls, you were talking to me. You, it, it's, when you're on, yes. you are on. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's not like you have this, this, constantly cruising you know, like you sound like as chilled as yes. right now yes. but that's not the way you work you work at a very frenetic pace from what I can see and and even before we started this podcast you you made about 25 phone calls yeah. in about 15 minutes yes. just before we started and then you had to quickly sit down and then you sort of I'm here you, you, yeah. you're here <laughs> So that's yeah, that, and but is I that love a good description. It is, it is. Mm. But I love that, you know. Yeah. Um, and my wife, she, she, she just sees me, um, like, um, and even coming here, like I was wrapping up a deal, right? Mm -hmm. So, mm. so I rang you. I said, mate, I'm going to be late. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, I was still in my sports gear. You know, I'd been out, gone. I've been down the river uh, early this morning. Mm -hmm. um, I was walking down the river at five to just before seven. Then. Mm -hmm come in I cook the kids brekkie but I love that that's um so now I'm rushing to see Peter there's three or four calls I've got to quickly make bang 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 got people uh around me like mm. I've got a, a, a team if that makes like my PA mm -hmm. um so I delegate a lot of stuff um but I love that that's um you know because it's like I'm not standing still mm -hmm. um so that's my, you know, and, but for a lot of people, they couldn't mm. do it, you know, because mm -hmm. it's just like they're, they're spinning too many plates. Mm -hmm. um, but, um, yeah, no, it's, um, you know, uh, so, yeah, so back to the, um, so the champions, right, and, um, and just to break it down, um, not, so, not the champions, sorry, the um, agency, right? Yeah. So, um, you know, like um, my energy, um, like if we're now looking at a monetary side of things, so when I was running um, or going out and doing a deal, having my own business and my own name up in lights, woohoo, mm. right? Um, I was, you know, do a ten grand commission. I'm getting two thousand five hundred bucks. Mm -hmm. Now I go out do a ten grand commission, you know, and I've got bugger all overheads because mm -hmm. I only have one admin staff mm -hmm. at seven and a half thousand, mm -hmm. right? Mm. For 
the same yeah. energy. Yeah. So, Mike, I, I talk to a lot of principals uh, around my age. So, so they're getting at the north end of their career, mm. and uh, they. They, they bemoan their business, they bemoan the lack of profit, they bemoan the, the amount of work that they're doing, but they hang in there because it's basically all they ever know or they've ever known. And I point to you as an example of, well, if you could just let it go, there's another life that you could have yep. where you'd earn what you're earning today yep. and live a hell of a simpler life and 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 a more enjoyable life. Yes, yep, hundred percent. And look, um, a lot of um, the agency, um, you know, like ten percent of the turnover. It's a massive company. Is all friends of mine that have basically you know got to that point where they go, you know what. I don't want to run this big business anymore. I just mm. want to go and be a salesperson. Mm. I don't want to have more time to play golf. And, you know, I want to go on more holidays. I'm going, yeah, bring it on. You know, it's, it's like we're only here for, you know, a short period of time. You might as well do what you want to do, right? So, and if your business is, you know, I, I, I see a lot of people, business is a trap. Once you're in it, you, you know, you, you, you can't get out. And um, uh, so... You know, any of the listeners that may be listening to this, like if, you know, I'm always having coffees with people and just saying, just do what I do, mm -hmm. just, you know, because you can sell. You can just mm -hmm. go and sell. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, and selling homes is is like once you know the process, once you understand how it all works, it's it's not difficult. Yeah. It's and just, and it's, it's enjoyable. Yeah, and if you've got the, you know, most of these people have been running businesses, so they've got clientele, they just, they, they, they'd flick the switch and go from one, one, see you, like, bye-bye business, mm -hmm. you know, someone else can, you know, mm -hmm. have that now. Um, I'm just going to go over here and, you know, uh, do some sales and, you know. Yeah. And then they don't have to do 80, 100 sales like mm -hmm. I do. They can, you know, they could do. 20 or 30 sales yeah. and um, and still as, make a decent a, living absolutely because yeah. you know especially if you're because there's so many commission models now mm. out there mm. where you know um, you've got to um, you know you can keep the lion's share you mm. know um, and, and, and that's interesting in itself because now with the commission um, you know offers out there like you know um, even the average of agents can, join, is much the, higher than can join the agency mm -hmm. and normally they would be like lucky to be on 45 mm -hmm. and they're on 75 if they're, mm -hmm. you know. Just ordinary. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, um, so, and then you get the, if you keep your overheads down, you know, and you collect your vendor paid marketing, mm -hmm. um, like it's, you know, you don't have to, like the example I gave you, I literally have to, to sell three properties in my old business to keep the same amount as selling one property mm. in under somebody else's business. Mm. Like, like, and I'm no mathematician. Um, that's why I had to go to my accountant. But once I saw that, it was like my decision, like, you know how quick had I made, you know how made. quick mm. I made the let's shut down mm. michaelkeel.com? Mm. It was instant. Mm -hmm -hmm. I just said, right, you know, because there was other factors at play, but I just said, I went back to everyone in the office, said, guys, um, I'm no longer going to be running michaelkeel.com and employing you, you all, unfortunately, but I'm going to help you find another um, position mm. in the, either come with me to the agency and some of the people like Brooksy. Brooksy came across. And he's done very well. He's doing exceptionally well. And, um, you know, he's a smart fella and he, um, you know, he, he's got some great systems and I'd like to think that I've had a big, mm. you know, um, involvement in that. And, um, like, I love seeing him doing well. There was a couple of other people that went off to Minnick Real Estate um, and they're doing well and the property management... Um, the um, uh, the agency took that over, and, but you know, like, like I was so ready to even my property management business, right? Um, uh, I made I made the deal so easy for the agency 
I said, look, you just take over my property management portfolio. Um, don't worry about paying me, okay? And just pay me 100% on everything I write till, you know, we come to a point where... Yeah, right. Yeah, and wow. so that was a no-brainer. Wow. And, um, you know, we negotiated a deal where they, um, you know, for 12 months because um, I wanted to fill my office up with uh, salespeople, you know, um, and then I could get a rent from them, you know. Um, so they even, you know, uh, we negotiated that they would pay my mortgage for 12 months while I had time to bring in some people. My office is full now, even though there's no receptionist, it's more of a um, workstation area. Yes. So it's my PA in there, uh, Rob Vallecott, um, Tom Mishak, he's a gun. There's mm. another guy I'd recommend that you interview Tom because mm -hmm. Tom has, um, you know, he was a business owner and mm. now he's running his own little business under the agency and just killing it, mm -hmm. like literally not looking back. Uh, I, think he's, I think his wife, I'm her most favourite person, mm. you know, because mm. I encouraged him to just be a salesperson. Yeah. So, you know, because um, he wasn't um, getting... Um, any enjoyment out of running a business and mm -hmm. you know so um yeah so my office is full um with great people i've got a neil singh there's another young guy and neil could have gone and run a ran, ran his own business and done exactly what i did he's so smart because he listened mm -hmm. he goes mike I, I i'm gonna stay a salesperson i'm not gonna i don't need to you, you, you can't do any better than a salesperson. You don't need to run a business if you're a good salesperson. Mm, mm. Um, and he's never looked back as well. So mm. I like to think the people that I have given advice to who have taken action have, um, you know, they, I know they've done well. Mm. So I feel good about that. Mike, I think we'll wrap it up there. Absolutely. It's been uh, a fascinating uh, to have you share your journey with us. Uh, it's uh, uh, and I, I really hope that some young people and and some older people will will listen to this and take away the you know that sort of spirit of adventure and um, and having a crack yep. and also just not being attaching your ego to a business and thinking well that's the the only thing that I can ever have so yeah, yeah mm. there's life after real estate yes so um, no but thanks mate for having us and um, yeah we'll. Uh, We'll look forward to talking about the champion's journey one day. We'll do that one day. Okay, mate. Thanks, Mike. Bye. And that wraps up another episode of the WA Property Q&A. We hope you found our discussion valuable and gained some valuable insights into the world of property buying in Western Australia. Remember, while we strive to provide useful information, it's crucial to consult with the appropriate professionals before making any investment decisions. Don't forget to tune in next week for another exciting episode where we continue to unravel the mysteries of the WA property market. If you have any questions or topic suggestions, feel free to reach out to us. Until then, happy property hunting and remember to seek the right advice for your personal circumstances. Thank you for listening.